Hello everyone. Welcome back to machine learning sessions. In this session, we will learn about the tangent prop algorithm, which comes under using prior knowledge to alter the search object. So let us get into the details. The tangent prop algorithm is used to train a neural network to fit both the training values as well as the training derivatives. In the KBNN algorithm, we have seen how to make use of the training values in, all, in the algorithm. But here, this algorithm is adding the training derivatives as well. Okay, so the tangent prop accommodates the domain knowledge, whatever we have expressed as derivative of the target function with respect to the transformation of its inputs. Let us consider the example of learning task involving an instance space X and target function F. So how will you represent this example? We'll be representing this as Xi comma F of Xi, right? So in the tangent prop algorithm, along with this training value, we will also be adding the derivative of the target function, which is do f of x by do x at x. So this is how example instance in the tangent prop will look like. So now let's see one example. Let us consider the task of learning a target function f based on the training examples x1 f of x1, x2 f of x2, x3 f of x3, where this x1, x2, x3 are some real values and f of x1, f of x2, f of x3 is the target function. Okay. So now after applying, so this is the output that you have obtained. Okay. So the function f you can see here. And now, so let us suppose that these three training examples are given to the back propagation algorithm. Okay, so then what it will do? So the back propagation algorithm will try to will be trying to give us a smooth function such as like this. So all these points will be connected and a function g will be generated like this when you are using a back propagation algorithm where you perform the weighted distance based on the error value. Okay, so in a similar way, so here you can see we are adding the training derivatives as well, right? So when you are adding, the effect of providing the training derivatives or slopes as additional information for this training example, so then you might, you, you will get a function like this, okay? So here you are seeing the G, which is shown in a light, the dotted format here you can see on top of it when you so this you will obtain when you have only the training examples in the similar to the back propagation but along with that what we are doing we are supplying the derivative so here you can see the solid boxes are representing as the derivatives as well okay so because of that you are getting a function like h so now, fitting both the training values f of x, i and the training derivatives, the learner has a better chance to correctly generalize from the sparse training data. Okay. So not only we are giving the training values f of x, i, we are providing the derivative as well. And to summarize, the impact of including the training derivatives is to override the inductive bias that is present in the back propagation and to provide a smooth interpolation between the points. So how we obtain this smooth points? It will our algorithm will replace it by explicit in, input information about the required derivatives. Okay, we are not only taking the derivative, but we are taking the input as well. Xi we are taking and the target function we are calculating and then we are calculating the derivative. Okay, so unlike the back propagation, we are not simply depending on the derivative. So we are taking the real value as well. So based on that, you can perform a smoothening. I'll show you the error function also. It will be clear to you. And the resulting hypothesis, we have seen the H function, which is a smoother one. Okay, so... 
the tangent prop training derivatives, this algorithm can work with derivatives with respect to various transformation of the input, not only the case of one single input xi, but we can have transformation of the inputs as well. Okay. So suppose if you take the example of learning to recognize the handwritten characters, okay, each person will not write the alphabet A in the same way. Everybody will have their own style. So there can be some small variations. Okay. So that is what the transformation we are talking about here. And assume the input X. So this is an image containing a single handwritten character, say suppose. And the task is to correctly classify the character. Okay. Our algorithm, the tangent prop algorithm has to classify what is the character. And in this task, we might be interested in informing the learner that the target function is invariant to small rotations of the character within the image. Okay. So if you have a small tilted image or while scanning, it may go this way or that way. So all that small rotations are not altering the target function value. So that's what the user has to be clear with. And in order to express this prior knowledge to the learner, we first define a transformation expressed as S of alpha comma X. Okay. So here this alpha is by how much amount this input image X is rotated. Okay. So by alpha degrees, the image X is being rotated. So this is represented with the help of this transformation function. And now we can express our assertion about the rotational invariance by stating that for each training instance at site, the derivative of this target function with respect to this transformation is zero. Okay, so though, since you are transforming and when you calculate the derivative of it, you are getting a zero. Means you will set your weights in such a way that so whenever there is a slight transformation, Okay, so when you perform a derivative on that, you are seeing that its value becomes zero. So you should set your weights like that. So here you can see the derivative of every training instance, what we are saying is expressed like this. Okay, S of alpha comma xi is the transformation function what we are using. On that, you are performing a derivative with respect to this alpha. So it is expressed as do alpha of s of alpha comma xi by do alpha is equals to zero. Sorry, do f of s of alpha comma xi by do alpha is equals to zero. So here f is our target function and s of alpha comma x is the image resulting from applying the transformation. And the tangent prop access multiple transformations. And here each transformation, we are trying to generalize this. Okay, so if you take a single transformation, we are expressing it as S. When you have multiple transformations, so then the same thing you can express as Sj of alpha comma X, where J will range from 1 to the number of four transformations that you are taking. And here alpha is a continuous parameter and Sj is differentiable. And here also, we are equating this sj of o comma x is equals to x. Okay. So all the time, whenever you take a rotation, we are saying that its derivative becomes zero. Okay. So example for rotation of zero degrees transformation is the identity function. Okay. So identity function, whenever you apply a derivative on it, ultimately it will become zero. So, okay. Why this statement is mentioned here? Just think about it. So, what we are talking here actually talking about the output filter. So, at the output, what is what should be the function that you should select? Okay, suppose if you select sigmoid, okay, so that is differentiable, it will not go to zero. Okay, so you should select some other function which which gives you an identity function. Okay, so that's what you have to understand here. For each such transformation, SJ of alpha comma X, the tangent prop considers the squared error between the specified training derivatives and the actual training derivatives of the learned neural network. 
So you can see the error function. Okay. So here you can see f of xi minus f cap of f of xi. f of xi is the original one. This f cap is the modified one. Plus mu into sigma dou f sj of alpha comma xi divided by dou alpha. So this is the original derivative and this is the modified derivative. Okay, so when you have worked out with the back propagation algorithm, so there we have taken only this part, right? The left part, f of xi minus f cap of xi whole square. So this part we have taken based on that we calculated the error and we back propagated it. Okay, so here we are adding the difference of this derivative as well and multiplying it with a value mu. Okay, so here mu is a constant provided by the user to determine the relative importance of fitting the training values versus fitting the training derivatives. So what should be the, how you should choose the value of mu? Should it be a smaller one or should it be a larger one? Suppose considering the derivatives is very important in a certain example, say suppose. So then you should choose the mu value significantly large. Suppose if it is negligible, so then you should choose the mu value a very less. So let's see an example. So here, Simrad et al. presented results of comparing this back propagation algorithm with the tangent prop algorithm. So where they have taken a test set of size 160 examples. And that too. So every time they have not taken all these 160 examples. Sometimes randomly they have picked up some few and some other time. So here you can see they have taken training sets of varying size and then evaluated based on their performance. So here also the task is recognizing the handwritten characters. And so here the character is a number ranging between zero to nine. Okay, so like that 160 examples. So numbers written by 160 people they have taken as a data set. Okay, so this is how you can construct your own data set. So you can take multiple inputs from different users and you can design a custom data set as well. Okay, so when they have taken like that, the prior knowledge that is given to the tangent prop is classification of the digit is invariant, whether you take vertical translation or whether you take horizontal. So always the derivative was made as a zero. Okay, so that was the prior knowledge given to the algorithm. And the results shows always the tangent prop has a less error when compared to the back propagation algorithm. So why this has happened? So here, along with the original value, we have considered the derivative of the target function as well. So because of that, you can see, suppose if the training set size is 10, then tangent prop has given us an error for 34% of error, whereas back propagation has given 48% of error. Similarly, if you take a training set of size 80, so then the tangent prop has given 4% of error, whereas back propagation has given 10% of error. Okay, so here some might be getting a doubt of how come when they collected only 160 examples, how come they took a training set of size 320? Okay, so the thing is they have performed along with the 160 some um, what to say, they have pooled the data. So along with this 160, some random rotations they might have performed and generated few more examples based on this 160 only in various combinations, okay? So instead of taking the same one, two, three, four order, so they might have taken two, four, five, six, and they have added to this 160. Like that randomly selecting in different, different orders can be done. So all that are part of uh, pooling the data. Okay, so like that when they have done, when they have taken a training set of 320, tangent prop has given 0% of algorithm and back propagation has given 0%. Okay, so when you have more number of examples, our neural network will become efficient. It will learn more and more. It will, so when it has worked out with these many examples, by this time it might have learned what should be the weights. Our network is efficient in recognizing the characters correctly. Hope you enjoyed.
So if you follow the topic, do like, share and subscribe. I need lot many subscribers. Okay. So I need more encouragement from you. So if I see more subscribers, I will be encouraged more. Thank you.